a disaster. It can never work. She wants to try and get it done. Hillary, she wants to try and save it. It can't be saved. It was no good from day one. It'll never be any good. We have to help our vets immediately. We have to secure the border. Our drugs are pouring across, forgetting even about the people that are coming in illegally. Drugs are pouring across our border. People in places like North Carolina and New Hampshire, you can buy drugs, you can buy heroin for less than candy. And kids are buying it for less than candy. And what's happening to those communities and those states and our whole country, our children, our, our kids are being poisoned with drugs. We're gonna secure the border. We have to build up, we have to immediately start with our very depleted military. We have jets that are so old they don't even make the parts for them anymore, Brett. There's so many things to do, but I would start by we have to get health care in line. If you look at a great place like Arizona, 116 percent increase in premiums, 116 percent. People are going bankrupt trying to pay for health care. And by the way, the health care is no good because deductibles are so high you can't use it. So it's, it's a tremendous problem. And Gruber, Jonathan Gruber, the architect, the wise guy who said uh, the American people are stupid. Well, he's going to find out they're not stupid. Governor Pence, I mean, you know that the window is fairly short in a new administration to be able to get things moving. Um, on that list that Mr. Trump just mentioned, in the first 100 days, how do you kind of get all that stuff going? Well, the first thing we do is we make sure that Donald Trump is the next president of the United States. And then we reelect Republican majorities in the House and Senate. Uh, wh what you have here is a leader. Uh, and he's cast a vision to make America great again by rebuilding our military, getting this economy moving again, not with the tax increases that Hillary Clinton's advocating, but by cutting taxes across the board, uh, repealing Obamacare, having the kind of trade deals that are, are negotiated in a way that puts the American worker first, and having the kind of appointments to the Supreme Court uh, that will uphold our Constitution in the tradition of the late Justice Antonin Scalia. All, all that takes is new leadership in the White House, renewed leadership on Capitol Hill. And I promise you, having gotten to know this man over the last three months, uh, the energy and the leadership that he's going to provide uh, is going to change the direction of Washington, D.C. and our country quicker than you could possibly imagine. One of the top issues in our list that is not talked about a lot is education. From a Trump-Pence ticket, what is the education system look like? Well, we talk about it a lot. Number one, choice. We're going to give choice because that's really needed and really needed in the inner cities where there, there essentially is no education. If you want to know the truth, it's horrible. And number one. Number two, we're going to end Common Core. Common Core is a total disaster and we're going to bring education local. What we have right now is crazy. It's being run out of Washington, D.C. by bureaucrats, many of whom don't care. They just get big fat checks. And you look at where our education is worldwide, Brett. Our education is so bad. It's so bad. Now, we're number one in one thing, cost per pupil. By far, we blow everyone away. As far as the quality of the education, we're 28 and 29. You take a list of 30, we're 28 and 29. You have Sweden, you have Denmark, you have Norway, you have China, you have Japan. You have countries that are spending much less money and doing a much better job. So we would end Common Core, bring education local. One of the very first things Donald Trump and I talked about was his belief that education is a state and local function. Ending Common Core is born of that principle. But his passion to give parents the ability to choose where their children go to school, regardless of their income, their area code, I think is an idea whose time has come. I think the best quality he has is he's someone who's very impatient with failure. Also on this list is climate change. If you're a millennial who thinks that climate change is a problem and believes the scientists who say it is, why would you vote for a Trump-Pence ticket? Because we want clean air, we want safety, and we want clean water, crystal clean water. But we can't give hundreds of billions of dollars away to groups that we don't even know where the money is going. It's crazy. And our, our businesses can't compete with businesses from other countries because of what they're mandated to do. We they just can't do it. We have to build our businesses back up. Now, climate change, some people agree and some people don't. Both groups are very vocal. 
Some agree, some don't. I consider myself to be somewhat of an environmentalist, believe it or not. But I get tremendous accolades for what I do and the work I do. But we can't afford to be giving billions and billions of dollars away and restricting our businesses when other countries that we're competing against don't have those restrictions. So when Hillary Clinton says you don't believe in science, and she uses this on the trail. I don't think most Americans want the kind of divisive and dark change Donald Trump is offering, denying the science of climate change. And she points back to you saying China is making this up. What do you say? Well, I'm a total believer in science, but nothing's very conclusive. Um, you had meetings, if you remember, six, seven years ago where the various people in charge of climate change were emailing each other about what a joke this whole thing is. I mean, look, I'm not knocking anything. I'm just saying we have a country that's in trouble. We have $20 trillion in debt doubled under Obama's presidency. Doubled. In a period of eight years, it doubled. And we can't afford to be doing the kinds of things that he's getting us into because our businesses cannot compete. We need jobs. We have a trade deficit of $800 billion. We can't do that. I think what's happening out there as the election continues to approach is people are seeing what a clear choice this is, Brett. This is, this is the clearest choice in a national election in my lifetime. And more and more Americans every day are choosing strength and are choosing to support Donald Trump as the next president. Last thing while I have both of you here. If you win, what will you do about Paul Ryan, who obviously you had some problems with throughout this campaign. Um, would you work with him or work to replace him as speaker? Uh, I will work with Paul Ryan. I'm very disappointed in uh, leadership because I really believe we'd be winning by a lot. Uh, that we have to fight against Republicans is absolutely insane and ridiculous, so I'm very disappointed. But I will work with everybody. I'm not just talking about Paul Ryan. I'll get things through. He's a friend of yours. Um, what do you think about these Republicans who are running away from your ticket? You're building that up too much. Let me tell you, we have tremendous Republican support. We do. But there are a few people at the top that have not been properly supported. Some of them are coming back. Now, and don't saying forget, they, will support. They, are. they should be better than they are. And Brett, this is a movement of the American people. He's won over independents all across this country who are tired of gridlock in Washington. He's won over many Democrats who are tired of liberal policies in our nation's capital and trade deals that are driving jobs out of our country. But make no mistake about it, the overwhelming majority of Republicans are already there. But our message to the rest is if, if, if you believe we need to rebuild our military, if you believe we can revive this economy through tax cuts and repealing Obamacare, if, and if you believe that we need to have strict construction as to the Supreme Court of the United States, our message is it's time for Republicans to come home and elect Donald Trump as the next president of the United States. Brett, so look, that's the look close. At, look Change. At, no, no, let me just say, look at Utah. I love the people of Utah. I have great relationships in Utah. Now, if for some reason we lose Utah, that could have a very devastating impact on the overall. Now, what happens? Forgetting about everything else, our country will never be the same mm. because we will not mm. get to pick Supreme Court justices in the mold of Justice Scalia. And we have 20 unbelievable people picked, mm. vetted by Federalist Society and Heritage. These will be great justices of the Supreme Court. Now, and I will pick only from that list. So, you know, because they were a little concerned because I was never a politician, so maybe he'll go out and pick a liberal. Okay, that's not happening. Only from that list I'm going to pick. Only. We're not going outside that list. Now, we could have two, three, four. There's even a scenario we could have five picks this next, probably more than any other president. If the incredible people of Utah, they're incredible people, I know the people of Utah, if they go enough for this character that's running all over the state and we lose the state of Utah, that's devastating because that means we're probably going to lose the Supreme Court of the United States for 60 years. Hmm. By that time, it won't matter because at the end of 60 years, we won't have a country left. We will cover every stop along the way. Mr. Thank Trump, you. Governor Pence, thank you very much. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, bro. Next up, the panel on the campaign and what the FBI's big announcement means for the final stretch.